Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in. So glad to be with you today. Hope things are going well in your life and that you are experiencing in every way the love of the Lord and His joy and His peace because it's available. That is the good news. And if anybody knows that at all, it's my good friend Carol Kent, and we're so glad that she is back with us today. I want all of you to drop your cameras. <laughs> Welcome, <clears throat> Carol, and of course, Jean is in the building too. And we're so happy to have both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Carol for Jean. Uh, this is a wonderful couple, and it is our privilege, really, to get to spend some time with them uh, every few months and bring a subject that I believe so definitely the Lord put together. Uh, Bible talks about those kind of that you forget about. And, you know, sometimes there are situations it's easy to forget about a person and it's easy to forget what, what's gone on in their life. And, and so many times we do not have the understanding of what they are going through. But Carol and Jean Kent, they understand uh, what it's like to have someone they love more than anybody in the world. That's their son who is in prison for the, for the rest of his life. But God takes the worst situations that can come to us and uses them to help and bless others. It's all through the New Testament. So we're thrilled they're back. And we're going to talk today about her newest book, He Holds My Hand. And <clears throat> uh, it's available as I speak. It's just hot off the press. And I am really, maybe I would call myself a connoisseur of devotionals. I love them. I've got a lot. But let me tell you. This one is really something else and kind of stands out in front. I've been, uh, had a little advance on it and been reading it. So we'll be talking about that and also uh, her experiences. Uh, she travels everywhere speaking and I just praise God for this great couple. And I'm going to join Stephanie. Uh, this really looks good. Salsa Verde Chicken Casserole. And the stuff we got in it, it has to taste good. I think to just about anybody on the planet. I'm very anxious to taste it. And before I join her, let me again remind you, we are viewer supported. That means you good people out there, you support us. And we thank you for every penny. I'm very sincere about that. And very sincere that we get out the information that's going to make your life better through Jesus Christ. And we try to deal with those those things that can just come into anybody's life and happy to do it. So if you want to use your credit card or your debit card, call 1-800-229-0059. Or you can write to me at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, we'll thank you so, so much. And I'm glad to be over here with Stephanie. How are you? Doing great. How are you doing? Yes. Um, this really looks... This is going to be delicious. Uh -huh. I know it. Uh -huh. Salsa verde. I Yummy. Think, yeah. So um, I'll let you start putting together... Okay, yeah. You're going to spray the pan and you're going to cut the avocado for me. I'm in charge of the avocado. Yes. One of my favorite time-saving um, hacks or whatever, whatever uh -huh. is buying a rotisserie chicken. Yep. And then shredding it, <coughs> dividing it, freezing it. So then mm -hmm. for dinner at night, you have dinner already started. You take you sure the frozen do. chicken out. Mm -hmm. So this could be put together in less than 10 minutes one night for mm -hmm. dinner. Or you could make a double batch and then just have one already frozen. Well. So that's two cups of chicken and a cup of sour cream. And then we're going to put in um, three cups of the store. Ah. It's just store-bought sal salsa verde, verde. Which, funny, funny story. Uh, Arthling called me. He's like, have you ever heard of um, Salsa Verde? And I was like, yeah, I thought she wanted to know how to make it. So I started going into this whole rant <laughs> about, it's tomatillos, it's garlic. She's like, um, okay, I just need to know where to get it in the store. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Oh, she gave me an education on Salsa Verde, and I didn't even know it existed. I was like, I need to just start listening first. <laughs> so, okay, so this was this. two cups of chicken. Uh, we did the rotisserie. Do you know, I always do an avocado perfect at home, and now that I'm on the air, this you thing can't. looks like I smashed it. Oh, you're the, the, hurting the, it. The seed is stuck. <laughs> I know all the, <laughs> no, it really is. I know all the chefs out there are just having a fit. Wow. Look at that. All righty then. It won't come off. This is, okay, how about just do this side there? Here. <laughs> 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 
Okay, Listen, cooking 101. No. <laughs> this is the truth. I probably eat a half of avocado every day of my You're life. Sorry. That has never happened. Nope. But if you if you try, you can't pull that yeah, off. There's of there. some, you probably yeah. need to just cut it off. Yeah. Okay, so, so we have um, a quarter cup of salsa verde I'm going to put in the bottom of the pan. I know people will want to call and correct my pronunciation, and that's okay. Um, okay, so we have... And you talk to the folks while yes, I wash my hands. We have um, eight cor uh, flour, no, corn tortillas. Mm -hmm. So I put the salsa verde. I'm going to do four corn tortillas. How easy is this? It, I don't want to taste that. You got medium, so it, it might have a little kick to it, so be careful okay. you don't like spicy. It's not too bad. I can't take anything spicy. Yeah. Okay, oh, so. yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> it just kicked you. Okay, so I'm going to put half of the um, mixture I made with the sour cream and the chicken and the salsa verde, and then I'm <laughs> going to put in fresh tomatoes. Yummy. And cilantro, which I love. Not everyone mm -hmm. loves cilantro. It's I do. a love-hate thing. Either you love it or yep. you hate it. That's yep. how cilantro goes. I love it. And then we also have cheese. We're going to put a layer of cheese. And then I'm going to do it all over again. I'm going to put another layer of tortillas, another layer of the chicken mixture, tomatoes, mm -hmm. cheese. And then you bake it. You bake it for 20 to 25 minutes at... 400 you could sure have that put together degrees. before you go to work and for just sure put it in the oven. Yes, make it the night before. Have it in the you know the we talk about the uh, Proverbs woman mm -hmm. and that she makes us tired because she's she's in business. <laughs> she has kids. She has a husband. She's yeah. got a, but she had all these maids. Yeah. Okay, okay, we've got those maids. We've got washers. We've got dryers. We've got freezers. So what I say is. Quit complaining. And, and it's about all about being prepared. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just about preparation. You if can you do have it a, all. You really if you can. you have a Sunday afternoon that you have a couple hours and you can put a few meals together or yeah. put a roast in the crock pot, a roast in the crock pot will give you two or three meals if uh -huh. you do it right. Yeah. So it's all about preparing. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little more cilantro, a little more cheese, and then you bake it 400 degrees. And I'll move this stuff. Thank you. For 20 to 25 minutes till it's good and bubbly. And look how gorgeous it is. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous. And then we're supposed to put this beautiful well, avocado. Once you um, cut it and put it on the plate, you can just put a, a lovely slice of avocado. Okay, over the but top. the recipe shows you put this, these beautiful slices, yes, which I well. have made for you today. <laughs> but wow, avocado 101. Uh -huh. oh, there was something wrong with that one side. Yeah, it was. <laughs> honey, it was honey. absolutely honey. molded. Right here. Yeah, uh, go ahead. You're not as messy as I am. Oh, doesn't that look oh, good? Oh, and it's hot, hot. I can see the steam, so you're mm -hmm. going to need to be careful. Got to be really careful. There you go. There we go. Mm. Oh, boy. That looks so... Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. It, I wish we had smell-o-vision. Because mm -hmm. it smells so... I wonder if they'll have that someday. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. <laughs> Did we do good? Yeah. Oh. Careful. That's wonderful. That's delicious. I love that salsa. <laughs> That's so good. It's just such a nice change from just regular. Oh my! Um, mm. mm -hmm. Of all the in, all the recipes we've done, boy, that goes to the That's top. That's a good one. So yep. good. So the information coming up on your screen, if you want, is free. Just email us. It's the best way. Or if you don't have email, write to us, send us an envelope with your return address on it, and also a stamp, and we'll get it out to you. I don't know who would not like this. Okay, if you haven't met Carol Kent, you are in for a treat, so stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may send your email request to artheline at rippy.org, or you may write to us at the address on your screen, and in doing so, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We thank you for being a part of our Homekeepers family. I'm so happy to welcome back to the program uh, Carol Kent. If you haven't met her, she holds a de master's degree in communications and also bachelor's in speech education. And I'm only going to list just a few of the books that she's written. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any more time. When I Lay My Isaac Down, you got to read that one. A New Kind of Normal, which is on the heels of that. Uh, Between a Rock and a Grace Place. Wonderful. Unquenchable Miracle on Hope Hill. And... Um,
a lot of others. That's just a few. And this brand new one, it's out this week. So I uh, hope you'll look for it and we'll put her uh, website up. You can get it there or you can go to Amazon or all the places. Uh, did Tyndale publish this one? They did, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you find that in your Christian bookstores as well. Do you know what I wanted to ask you though? Uh, when you were in school, did any of the teachers say that you showed a promise in writing? You know, Arthur, none of my teachers <laughs> ever told me that I might possibly be a good writer. In fact, when I was in high school and I would write essays, I really had to work hard for a B plus. So the fact that I am an author today and have written several books is like God's glorious surprise. Yeah. Who would ever have thought that he would have turned me into a writer? Yeah. I love that term, the surprise. Uh, my friend Shirley Lucas wrote a song, Doesn't That Surprise You the Way He Shows Up? Mm -hmm, I love that. Yeah. Um, also, how do you do it? You've written all these books, and we're going to get into this one because this is um, just the way it's done. We'll explain that to you in a second. But like, do you say, okay, I'm going to write two hours today, or do you have a routine with this? Well, after all these years of writing, I do have a way that I format the calendar. And I look at my at-home days when I'm not on the road in ministry, and I say, now, from 8 o'clock until 3, I'm free today, so I'm not going to answer email then. I'm going to sit right here and I'm either going to do research or I'm going to do actual writing because this is book project time. And when publishers give you a contract to write a book, they have a certain time in the year when it needs to be ready in order for them to pay their bills. They have a deadline. All, they do. And so I consider that very important to follow through with what I've told them I will promise to have a manuscript in by a certain deadline. And that means saying no to a whole lot of wonderful worthy things and uh, to things I might like to do for fun when I'm on a book writing deadline. And if, what if you're just not in the mood? <laughs> <laughs> I would think you'd need a little inspiration when you do this. You know, I remember Elizabeth Elliot once saying, uh, I am a writer. And there are days when I sit at my computer and I don't feel like a writer. And I sit here until an idea comes. And yeah. I think that's wise counsel. One reason I ask you that, <clears throat> because I think people who do this do have kind of uh, it's just not an inspiration here, an inspiration. There has to be some kind of discipline. Um, but I heard Gloria Gaither say that she and Bill usually were through writing by noon. Ah. But they had other things to do. Well, that's another important thing that you have to consider. What is your peak time in the day? Mm -hmm. And my peak time for being able to think creatively is always in the morning rather than late afternoon when I'm getting tired. Mm -hmm. And so I try to plan my time, whether it's preparation of a message or writing on a book chapter. I try very hard to do that at my peak time in the day. So I think of it as giving uh, God an offering of my best, most creative of time in the day when I allow him to speak through me in terms of being able to do this job that he's given to me, which is being a Christian writer. And, and you learn as you get older, uh, that's where I am. I got eight great grandchildren. Um, you know that there's always something new with the Lord. I, a few weeks ago, um, I started getting up more and say, okay, Lord set my schedule. Mm -hmm. I producers, television producers are never finished. <laughs> Write it down because there's the next show and then, then there's the holidays. There's, you never just cut it off. And so you feel like you're going this. And I said, Lord, just set my schedule. And I sit down at the desk and I write it down. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you the difference. To do when it, you ask him to set it. Exactly. And I really believe that because we have this wonderful creative God who designed us in his image, mm -hmm. I believe that when we use good order and discipline in our lives, it honors him and he blesses that. He rewards it. I would say, don't forget the word disciple comes from the word discipline. Yes. And we have a very disciplined God. I mean, we have seasons, we have weeks, we have years, you know, you set that in motion and it's still working today. It sure does. Is this your first devotional? This is uh, my first devotional that's a 365 
page per day devotional. So in other words, you can start this on January 1 and have a new devotional for every day of the year. Uh, do you ever think I got 200 more of these to do? <laughs> oh, I did think that on this project. <laughs> and you think, oh no, I have already said everything I can possibly yeah, say. I and else to say. Every single one of these devotionals has a different topic. And uh, sometimes it will be on one of the attributes of God or it will be on something the Bible talks a lot about, like trust or unconditional love, or it might be something he's uh, revealed to me, like his divine surprises, mm -hmm. or uh, sometimes it has to do with uh, we as human beings being his dwelling place. And I started, every day I would get up and I would say, what is a new topic that the Bible addresses that I still have not talked about in this book? What are key scriptures that would bless God's people if they would read them and be able to just get that truth infused into their lives and they could figure out how to make decisions every single day. And I have to say, Earthling, of all of the books I've written, this one probably touched my life on every day of writing in the most personal way of anything I've ever written because I was in God's word constantly looking for his treasures mm -hmm. and they're everywhere. Yeah, they are. Uh, it's called He Holds My Hand. And let me try to explain. It starts out kind of with a topic. I got an advanced copy. And then it has a quote from one of God's great writers. Doesn't he have, I mean, Max Lucado, Elizabeth Elliot, Chuck Swindoll, uh, David uh, Jeremiah. Yeah. Corey Ten Boom. Erwin Lutzer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I've always said I want to have dinner with him. Maybe uh, I can have that in heaven because he went to heaven a long time ago, but boy, does he fascinate me. Powerful, powerful Some of his, servant. Uh, one, of, one of his uh, statements was Jesus calls you to, bid you to come and mm. die. Mm. Isn't that just oh, fabulous. It's incredible. Yeah, and that's what he did. Okay, and then so we have this headline from one of God's great writers, and then we have your uh, commentary on, on the scripture. At the bottom is a scripture, a verse or something. Just enough. Uh, as we were talking earlier, you, you mentioned you know, people that are just burdened down yes. and needing a word from God they usually can't take on a whole chapter. No, many people find it difficult to even read when they are in the middle of crisis or d deep discouragement or they're grieving over the loss of a loved one or the loss mm -hmm. of a relationship or because a child is incarcerated. And I, I started to say, Lord, what would be the most beneficial for the greatest number of people in a devotional? And I started to go back to when Jason, our son, was first arrested for a very serious crime. Most of our viewers know about that. And that is a time in my life when I was desperate to hear from God. And so I found out I couldn't read a whole chapter because I was too upset. I couldn't concentrate long enough to let that come into my mind in a, a large chunk. So I started taking one verse or a couple of verses and I would read them again and again. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, Lord, what are you speaking into my heart as a result of this scripture? How does this apply to me today? And out of that kind of time alone with God, uh, I began to journal and I would write out what I truly believed in the light of this scripture would be his words over mm -hmm. me that day in a prayer form. And it became the greatest delight of my day to dissect scripture in that way. And I tell people they should read this devotional with their Bible open and the devotional next to it, because we know only God's word is inspired. But then ask yourself, Lord, what are you speaking into my life today? And then read this prayer in a way that you're just saying, Lord, would you just breathe on me today? Would you just shower me with your truth? Would you give me what I need even to make one decision today? Or it might be a concept like learning how to rest in him. Uh, what does peace look like? Uh, how can we be certain that we belong to him? And of course, the whole concept of he holds my hand mm -hmm. has to do with when we're walking through difficult times, his hand, he has our hand in his hand and he will not let he go. He won't let go. 
Oh, it's so precious. Yeah, uh, Carol's son was a great student, uh, graduated from the Naval Academy, everything in the world to be proud of, and is in prison today for first degree murder. There was never really a chance. No, no. Um, and raised, raised Christian is one of those things where it became unraveled over a situation. And since that time, or since I met her and then the Lord would cross our paths, I felt like the Lord said, have her on once a month to really minister to people, uh, not only prisoners, hopefully, but also their families. That's 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 why I think you and Jean have just, uh, only eternity will reveal it, uh, how you've helped the families. But I know, I read this, and then you just uh, referred to it, that you would take just a scripture about as much as you could digest and really meditate on it. Mm -hmm. You heard uh, who I heard talking about that it was on uh, Joni's table talk on Daystar, Marilyn Hickey. Yes. Now this lady, she's 86 years old and millions come to hear her in Pakistan. It, it, it's um, that God would use a woman <laughs> in a Muslim country, isn't it? But she told a personal story that uh, really captured my attention because I've only known her to be on top of the world, just bursting with joy. And, but she told Joni about how <clears throat> she went through because of physical illness and how it affected the chemistry and all, deep, deep depression and anxiety. And she, she said before that, she said, I told people, that people just put a rubber band around your head and snap out of it. You know, <laughs> you know we don't get depressed if we're Christians and all. And she said the very same thing, that she meditated on the, she's in depression, your son murdered, mm. same thing, same thing. You meditate on the word. And King David said, day and night, mm -hmm. I meditate on his word, day and night. Well, and I also so believe that he holds my hand is a devotional that you can give to friends. Sometimes, yes. sometimes you don't have words to comfort them or encourage them but you can put a resource like this in their hands and say, I'm praying for you and I hope this blesses you. So I, I see this as a resource I'll be giving to people who I know, including um, not just wives and moms of inmates, but uh, I plan to give it to anybody I know who needs to hear from him. And Arthleen, there's a scripture that is on the, the back cover that mm -hmm. I think is so important. And it is Psalm 63, 8. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. Boy, what a comfort. Isn't that an incredible comfort? And uh, when, when I think of finding his presence to be so close to me, and uh, when, I, when I think of desperately needing to know he is protecting me, what a joy it is to know that scripture is filled with comforting verses like that. My mother will turn 95 years old in a month. And yesterday I was talking to her on the phone and she said, Carol, I don't know if you know that I struggled with fear for much of my life. Every night I would go to bed and then I'd get up just to double check the locks to make sure everything was secure. And she said, if there was a thunderstorm, I would be afraid in the storm. And she said, it's taken me all these years oh my word. to turn my fear into faith. And it really is because of the comfort of God's word. Mm -hmm. And uh, I pray that he holds my hand will be a comfort to people before they turn 95. Yes, and she dedicated <laughs> it to her mom. That was sweet. I did. But um, this is brand new, as I mentioned, and the way it is laid out, it, I think I also mentioned I'm a connoisseur of devotionals, but this one really stands out because of the great quotes at the top of the page and then her thoughts and then that scripture that undergirds everything that's, that's on there. And you can go to the website and get it there. Um, what, what a wonderful gift for people who are walking through a, a dark time. In the foreword, she describes that horrible night. And why do these phone calls come at night? The Her bleakest husband, Yeah, Jean took the call and said that uh, Jason had been arrested for first degree murder. And the way she describes the shock, the nausea and all, and through it all wrote a lot of books and said you had, you had to keep working 
because you needed the money. Some exactly. people said, you know, did you take a sabbatical? No, they couldn't afford to do that. But now, at this point, mm -hmm. do you look back and see where he held your hand and you mm -hmm. had no idea he was there at the time? Yes. And I say that because there are so many times when you are so desperate and you feel so lost and the tears are clouding your vision and you, you say, where did God go? Mm -hmm. And I want to say he was there all the time and that when he seems the most absent, he is still ever present. And I, I could see the way in retrospect, in the rearview mirror of time, mm -hmm. I saw how step by step, sometimes in the nick of time, he met our financial needs. And then there were times mm -hmm. when I thought, I can't speak to this group. I, I'm so upset. Oh. I, I still have Did deep questions about why God allowed all these things to happen. And yet it would be time to step on that stage and I'd grip the word of God in my hand and then his peace would flood me as I began to speak out loud truth about God's word and about his character. And as I would look back on all of these things, yeah. I saw he was there all along, even though at times I questioned mm -hmm. why he had allowed this horrible thing to happen. Mm -hmm. And now, almost 18 years after our journey into our new kind of normal, as we say, I can, I can absolutely list pages full of blessings that have come. Mm -hmm. Did I ever want to get blessed like this Lord in this no. way? <laughs> Never. But do I realize that in the middle of pain, God can be the most precious presence you know, and you can know a closeness with him that you never experienced before. Mm -hmm. And then you can listen to his voice right through his words saying, I won't ever leave you. I won't ever Never. walk away from you. You are mine. Amen. We are out of time, but I, uh, when I got a hold of this book, I thought this one is different and it's such a blessing. And you know, it's born out of sorrow. It's born out of experiences with God that Carol and her husband would never have had any other way. If they could go back, would they change it? You bet. You bet. God was not in this, but God takes these awful things and turns them for good. It's a miracle how he can take something as awful as a first degree murder and turn it around to something that has blessed hundreds of thousands of people and continues to do so. And it has caused a great work inside the prison because our God can do anything. There is nothing impossible with him. And I'm sorry we're out of time, but we are. But join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.